Right, so Aljo, that was a brutal finish. Talk us through it. Like, what happened? Uh, you know, I tried to hit that once against uh, Henan Burrell, but I came short. I managed to put his leg behind his head in a complete banana split. He wouldn't tap. But um, let's just say Cody wasn't as flexible as Henan Burrell tonight. So uh, I heard his knee pop. And I thought he was going to fight through it because I, I, I know what it is, that, that outside ligament gets popped, the LCL, might even be the, the uh, PCL, ACL, who knows. It's just one of those freaky submissions, man. It's a knee bar. So uh, I thought he was going to keep fighting through it, but I think uh, once I, he saw that I was in a dominant position on top with the mount still, it was kind of like probably time to uh, lift to fight another day. Do you think this was a standout performance for you? I think so. I think the last two fights have been uh, pretty one-sided and pretty dominant. This one was a little back and forth in the first round with a couple of uh, scrambles. But that's where I thrive, man. I had that triangle. I thought it was done. And then uh, he managed to slip out. I was like, man, is he grease? No, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> but uh, I did think I was going to hit the reverse triangle. He got out of that. I was like, this motherfucker is not going to quit. So uh, uh, first round ended with a couple of flurries, but I still think I was winning that fight in the exchanges and the clinches and landing the cleaner strikes. And the second round was more so the same. Uh, he took me down with that power double I knew he goes for. And I managed to get to the cage and uh, I reversed position, got on his back and sure enough, I flattened him out twice. And uh, the second time was uh, more than enough to uh, put him away. Uh, you have like a photographic memory of that fight. Is this normal? <laughs> like, yeah, man, yeah, man. I'm, I get in the zone, but um, I'm very cognizant of everything that's going around me. Some people think it's kind of crazy that I can actually like see people in the crowd. I can see like my coaches and where they are. I'm like looking around, I'm, like hearing where my coaches are, and I'll start circling towards their corner so that it's just a little bit easier for me to kind of hear what they're saying for the instruction. And I think it's a little bit harder for my opponent to hear what his coaches are seeing and uh, being able to articulate to him what he should do. Afterwards, you made a couple of uh, impassioned call outs. Um, remember, there's no senses back here. So, <laughs> what exactly? Do you want next? Is it the winner of um, Dodson or is it Chris? If if I could have my way, I would 100% like to fight Dominic Cruz. I think it's a stylistic fight that will be fun for the fans. It's a guy I looked up to for a very very long time, and like I said, I want to fight all the legends of this sport in, in this division. I fought Burrell, took him out. I would like to fight Dominic Cruz, take him out. I mean, eventually I want to get that rematch, of course, with Marlon Marais. That motherfucker. You, you got a horseshoe up your ass, bro. Uh, two in a row? That doesn't happen to two top five, top ten fighters in a row in under a minute. That's like some unheard of shit. But uh, you got some voodoo something up in those legs. I don't know what it is, but I, I would like to get that one back and run it back and give the fans a true fight because that fight was shaping up really nicely until that happened. But um, <clears throat> perfect world, Dominic Cruz gets it next. And uh, I take him out, cement my name to be the next guy to, in line to challenge for the belt. I think I got all the tools to be a, to become a world champion, man. I really do. I can strike with the, with anybody. Uh, I think I'm very hard to hit. People see the strike differential in uh, offense and defense, and um, I'm a nightmare on the ground. If I get these hooks in, if I get on your back, I'm attacking submission after submission after submission. So off my back, on top, you pick your poison. Was this fight a little personal? Was he under your skin a little bit? Were you maybe a little more amped to get in there and fight this one than maybe recent fights? No, I don't think so. I think, uh, like I said, man, I grew up with the shit talk, and uh, I knew it was, I'm like, dude, if you're really like butt hurt that I said go get me a drink, I'm on vacation in DR, I just want to fight. I said I'm the best grappler in the world, because I truly believe I'm the best grappler in the world. If you want to de debate that, go ahead. Ronnie Yaya did the same thing, but it is just, it is what it is. I'm going to talk my shit. You want to talk your shit, talk your shit, shoot your shot. But at the end of the day, when we step in that cage, I, we were going to fight anyway. So a little more animosity. I knew, I told him, I was like, I'm just going to put a little bit more stank on those elbows when I get in those dominant positions. And sure enough, I did. Um, busted them open. And um, I think he went home with a busted knee, too. So I guess it was a good. It was good. I mean, you said you had a, a tougher cut this time around. Did, did you feel that at all? <sighs> Shit. In the cage? I did. I actually threw up in the back room and didn't tell anybody. Shh. But um, before or after? Before? Um, before the fight. Oh, before the fight. Um, literally, probably like. 10 minutes before we actually like walked out, which was kind of scary because I felt like it was going to come out in either the fight and I was going to get <laughs> DQ'd or um, somebody was going to walk in on me and see me throwing up and then report to the commission. But I, I don't know, it was weird. It was weird. It's almost like acidic, like like I had a long night of drinking. It was weird, very, very weird. But um, I cut four and a half pounds the day of the, the weigh-ins, woke up at 6.50 in the morning, banged it out in an hour, it's cramping up nonstop. But um, on Monday of this fight week, I was 100. 
45 pounds and I was 4.4% body fat, 4.37 if I'm being honest about the entire thing. So getting down, man, I, I'm either gonna have to change something about my, my, my physique, because it's starting to become really, really tough to get down. But, uh, you know, we get it done. You know, that's at the end of the day, we get, it, we get it done, we step on the scale, and we go out there and we perform. You ever thrown up like that before a fight? I actually threw up in a fight in between rounds, rounds four and five, as an amateur. Um, Raging Wolf, I remember that. And the ref didn't see it. My coaches went out. They, they said seconds out. They go to the side. As soon as they come to the side, they say, give me the bucket. They put the bucket out. I put my mouth through the cage. I go, spit the whole thing out. But, um, and then I felt better in the fifth round. I went out there and actually put on a, a better performance. It was slowing me down a little bit. So, so you throwing up that was weight cut related, not nerves or anything, you think? I don't, I honestly, I don't yeah. even know. It's really hard to say. I don't think, I mean, I get nervous every single fight. I never thrown up like that before the fight. That, I, it legit felt like I was drinking all night, woke up, and I was like, bro, I need some water, and it was just a whole bunch of acid coming out. But, um, it's kind of weird, man, but, uh, I went out there, got it out the system, ran my sprints, and uh, we had a good performance tonight. So, maybe it's just going to be like my new, uh, my new <laughs> thing to start doing. Do you think the commission uh, could do a better job with uh, in, in regards to weight cutting? Oh yeah, I mean, it's going to be a, a an entire landscape change. I mean, look at wrestling, look at BJJ, look at judo. These guys, they step on the scale within anywhere from half hour to two hours at most, and then they compete right after that. If you get guys who aren't severely dehydrating themselves like that, they're going to have to go up a couple of pounds. Cause if you do that and you try to fight, you're going to put yourself in an extremely disadvantageous position and you're going to get knocked out really fast because your brain just can't handle those type of impacts. Um, I've been trying to preach this to guys. I'm like, if you really want to stop cutting weight, you can't give us more time to cut weight because if you give us more time, that means we get more time to rehydrate. I'm like, so if you give us less time, it's like, all right, well, I can't go as extreme because I don't have as much time to recover. So something's got to give. I'm going to go up 10, 15 pounds if they did that. You know, I just physically couldn't make 136 and then fight within one, two hours. I just, I couldn't do it. It you would be a nightmare. you're trying to avoid uh, something dangerous happening with, you know, somebody dying in the ring? Well, there'd probably be yeah. one or two guys who are that stupid enough to be like, oh, let me cut 20, 30 pounds and then try to get on the scale and fight within an hour and get knocked out really fast. And you'll, they'll learn real quick, eh, maybe I should go up a weight class. This guy's gonna have to go up. It's gonna be a natural, it's gonna be a chain of reaction. I think 1FC is doing a pretty nice job with that. They're testing fighters, making sure they're hydrating and checking their weights um, throughout the, the period of them getting ready for their fights during the training camp. So I think that's a, another step forward and something that these guys could look at. Because for wrestling, we have to take a hydration test and there's no way you could deplete yourself and then be hydrated. It's impossible. So unless you're cheating, you got a fake penis in there. But um, uh, yeah, I think there's something to be said about that. I don't like cutting 30 pounds. I do my last fight, one week later I was 168 and a half pounds. I don't like cutting all the way down to 136. It's not fucking fun. I, I mean, it may look good for a couple, couple like a week, but um, it's not fun cutting down to this weight class. It really isn't. It's more miserable and taxing than anything. I feel like it shortens my, my fighting career. Do you see this uh, or maybe the next fight being your last fight at this weight class? <sighs> when you see guys like Zabit and Brandon Davis, Max Holloway, it's like, you, you think like, yeah, I'm done cutting this way, and then you see those guys and you're like, yeah, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it one more time and get back down to my weight class. Cause these guys, those guys are huge. I'm 5'7", those guys are six foot one, six, six one, five eleven, huge frames. Those guys are probably walking in their 70s, maybe even their 80s. I know the beat's pretty big. You know, I sparred with him one time. It was not a good night. It was not a good day for me. I'll be completely honest about that. So, uh, not, not good. And I realize that's why there are weight classes. So. I'm gonna say I've been away until they make some changes. I'm gonna be I'm gonna away. This is sorry, this is a little unrelated unrelated to you, but did you see when you're cutting away with all the other fighters? Did you see Nico back there, the um, the flyweight champion? I actually didn't see her in the workout room at all. Um, probably just different time slots that we were working out. But uh, you know, I still when when we came in on Tuesday, we were both signing the posters. I thought she was fine. She looked okay. I didn't think anything was bad was gonna happen. And uh, she is kind of big for the weight, though. I thought. I thought she looked like a pretty big girl, but um, we see what happened. I don't know if she just doesn't know or she doesn't have a, a proper team around her, because I thought she was, I mean, she looked good. She looked healthy, it looked like she could make the weight, no problem, like good spirits. And then sure enough, the day of the weigh-ins, I, I heard someone left in a stretcher. I had no idea it was her, and I found out literally after the weigh-ins it was her that got taken out on a stretcher or left yeah. on a stretcher, whatever. Yeah.
outside of the call, it said you put it's the hopes to get uh, another fight in by the end of the year. And is there a card that you're hoping for? Oh no, I don't think I got any bad bruises. Not look pretty good. But um, <laughs> I don't know, man. It, it really depends if it's the right matchup, um, the right timing. You know, I coach kids. You know, I do need a little time off. Just, just wait, like I said, man. The weight cut's brutal for me to do that again to my body would just be insane and. Uh, I gotta be smart about the way I'm doing things. Cause I don't want to rush in too fast, and the next you know, I have a bad performance. And because no one gives a shit about it. if you have a bad performance, they just they only see that. They don't see everything else that goes behind it. So at the end of the day, is what have you done for me lately? So I gotta make sure, you know, I learned a lot in this game. Just make sure I put myself in the right position to uh, for success. 50 G's, man. Dana, where you at? <laughs> I think I like I like this submission. <laughs> Thanks.